Welcome, sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. We are so happy you have joined us today. For those of you who are new here, we are an early retirement debt and mortgage-free couple living in the Hudson Valley area of New York. And basically our videos just show you how to have a full abundant life while spending less money. Today's video, we have packed it full. We're going to be sharing ways that you can live below your means by common sense life hacks, approaching situations, instead of just throwing money at the situation, coming up with ways to help you save money and also deal with the situation at hand. We are gonna be sharing a sourdough discard recipe. We're gonna show you how Paul handled the influx of water we had coming into our home, because as you know, the Northeast was inundated with rain these last several weeks. We are going to show you a zero food waste recipe, and I'm also going to share what you shouldn't do something that I did that I tell you all not to do time and time again, guilty. I'm gonna keep it real, I'm gonna share it with you because we hold each other accountable. So first thing we're gonna start with is I'm gonna bring Paul in here with me and he's gonna explain what was going on with the water coming into our home and how he handled it. Hey guys, just wanted to let you know, first thing I wanna say is our thoughts and our prayers yeah. are out to all the people that were suffering in this flood that we've had, uh, it's multi-state. I yeah. mean, some of the pictures I've seen, and even some of the flooding in my own area, my oh. own town, uh, just incredible. So yeah. what we got was actually nothing. nothing. Really, we're but, very blessed. Yeah, we really are. So anyway, our house is built into the side of a mountain, which is odd because the water should be going out at the bottom of the mountain. It's not. It comes in our boiler room where our furnace is. So we have a pump. And the water was coming in at such an alarming rate, it was starting to overtake the pump. I do have an extra pump. I didn't have to use it, but it's there for a backup. But boy, what a worry, you know. So what was happening was our floor in the next room is ceramic tile on a cement slab. And it was sweating due to the dew point of the humidity in the sub pump. Everything was just so wet. And it was like spotting of water, just like a, a glass of ice water yeah. in the summertime. You know how it just gets that drippy... Condensation. Condensation. What do I do? So luckily, I saved all the old bed sheets and bedding that we were going to throw out years ago. I use it for drop cloths around the house when I'm painting and everything else. They're clean. They're dry. I laid them out on the floor. What the sheets did was wick the moisture off the floor yeah. into the sheet and I would take it outside. I had to put it through the spindle on my deck and twist it and twist it until all the water came out like a ringer. Now this is a bed sheet. Could yeah. you imagine how big this is? I had to fold it over, soaking wet, and then I would let it lay outside on a sunny day to dry, and I would take another one and put it, it on the switch. floor. So I just did this over and over again. And with the fan blowing on it, some of it evaporated, but after about maybe, what, four days, yeah. we were able to get control of it. And then at that point, I could remove the sheets, and boy, I scrubbed that floor and washed it down <laughs> with did. bleach and everything else you could imagine. And, and wow, what a nightmare. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take you in and visually show you what it looked like and what Paul did yeah, and his creative solution, because it really worked. A little kooky, but it worked. <laughs> Here you go. So you know we keep it real here and you know how it has been raining and raining here in the Hudson Valley area of New York. As you can see, our tile floor has been sweating and we have gotten rain come in. So thank goodness we had the foresight to save old sheets. We use them for drop cloths when we paint but now we've been using them to keep the floor dry. We have got a fan going here and we are doing the best we can. There's that pretty girl. Hey, Dix, hi. And look who's under in the shade. Say hi, Loris. Look at that. Can you all see that under there? Hi, Mama. Loris is taking a siesta. 
what I wanted to show you is how we've been drying the sheets because if I had to keep washing them and putting them in the dryer, oh my goodness, you know what this would cost? So what Paul does is he comes out here, rings them, and then we lay them on the banister to dry because right now it's 90 degrees, so these are drying beautifully. And then he folds them and they go back inside and we switch them out. You can see we fainted with these. What a blessing we have kept them. And then at the end, when this is done, I will wash and bleach them all and hopefully uh, we won't need these again for a while. We also took time to realize the blessings of all this rain. We also had to show you the positives of the rain as well because our flowers just are so beautiful this summer. Our garden is doing so well. We have so many tomatoes and peppers. Nothing is ripe yet, so we're not able to eat from the garden yet, but we're hoping within the next week or two. So we had to share the good part of it as well with you. Now we're gonna go to last Sunday morning. We got up and I wanted to make some sourdough discard pancakes. And I will link the original recipe down in the description box. Now this recipe is made with mature sourdough discard. And that's what you need for this recipe. So let's get into the kitchen. It's Sunday morning and I want to make some pancakes. This is Raya. She is a mature sourdough starter. And I don't believe in discarding. I use the discard. So this morning we're going to make some pancakes with Raya's discard. They are going to be so good, I am sure. And then I'm going to feed her real well and put her back in the fridge. We're making this recipe with the discard right out of the fridge. We're not feeding it, nothing. It's cold, but it'll work perfectly. And I will link the original recipe down below. We're going to need one cup of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt. It called for a tablespoon of sugar, but I'm just gonna put a teaspoon of sugar. And now I'm just gonna mix this together. Now I'm doing a half a recipe and it called for a half an egg, but we're gonna put the whole egg in. It's gonna be absolutely fine. Three quarter cup of milk, one tablespoon of vegetable oil or any kind of mild tasting oil. And then we're gonna use a half a cup of this wonderful starter. Oh, these are gonna be so good. Again, this is cold, it has not been fed. And now we're just gonna give this a good mix just till it comes together. You don't wanna over mix it. I did get some items off of Amazon to make the sourdough bread making a little bit easier. And one of the items was this Danish whisk. It is amazing. Anybody who's worked with sourdough, it is extremely sticky. So this whisk just helps me to keep my hands clean. You see those bubbles? Ah, yes, that is good. This is mature starter. Again, this is not starter when you're just beginning. And So we buttered our griddle and it's set at 325. And I'm just going to use about a quarter cup per pancake. So these are ready to flip because you see the little bubbles are popping. Those are some good looking pancakes. <laughs> We're gonna let them cook for about two minutes more on the other side to make sure they're cooked throughout. Look at how high they are puffing up. I'm going to put two on this plate.
Going to add a little butter and then a little bit of syrup. Okay, now this is going to be the real test. Let's see the inside, how nice and fluffy. Look at this bite of pancake. Look at the airiness. So we're going to have some breakfast right now. So delicious. Oh my goodness. They were light and fluffy. There was no sourdough taste. I, I think some people think of like a vinegar taste when you think of sourdough. Not at all. They were light, fluffy, delicious, sweet. Wow. And that batch made about 10 pancakes. Again, I will link it down in the description box below. And we just put the others in the refrigerator and we popped them into the toaster to eat them during the week wonderful, wonderful recipe. Don't be throwing out mature sourdough discard, please, please. Another way to live below your means is to shop those lost leaders, those items on the front of your supermarket flyer that will save you so much money. So we did a small food haul and we also did a flash food haul. So we're going to now just show you the front of our flyer and those lost leaders, what we ended up buying. So here you go. There are some great sales at our shop right today. And we're gonna take a run out. Look at that, peaches for 99 cents. And then there's all these super coupons. Eight ears of corn for $2. Tomatoes on the vine for 99 cents. Grapes for 99 cents. Cherries for $1.99. Now, I am not going to buy to buy. I'm going to buy what I am sure Paul and I will actually consume. Now, I also have two coupons for Galbani mozzarella. It's on sale for, I think, $3.99. So, we'll get it for $2.99 a pound, which is a great price. And then I also have a buy one, get one free for the Natural Instincts hair color I use. And they are on sale for $6.99. So we have a pretty good shopping trip coming up. So the first item we got at ShopRite was my buy one, get one free, the Natural Instincts hair color I use. It was on sale for $6.99. So basically they were like $3.50 a box, which is great. I love this stuff. Corn was 25 cents an ear, and they're absolutely beautiful. A tip that I want to give you, I see so many people ripping the husks off in the store and just bringing the corn home bare like this with nothing on it. If you're not going to use it right away, leave the husk on it. It'll just keep it fresh and moist a little bit longer. I got myself some bananas. Oh my gosh, are these the cutest little baby bananas? I was so happy to see they had them this tiny. The peaches were 99 cents a pound, so I got myself four. We were completely out of garlic, I know, in an Italian house. How could that be? But I got two heads. I got two of my sweet the dahlia, I, you know what? You know what kind of onions these are, the sweet onions. We got two of these. The galbani was $3.99 a pound. I had a dollar off for each, so that was $2.99 for a pound of mozzarella, so that was really great. The tomatoes on the vine were $0.99. Cents. Our garden is not producing yet. We have a ton of tomatoes, but they're still green. So this was another great deal. I got the 18 ounces of blueberries for $2.49. And then the 12 ounce packages of Jimmy Dean bacon were on sale for $2.99. So this is what we got. And we're gonna show you our flash food haul now as well. Well, we just used the flash food app again. And if you're not sure what the Flash Food app is, I will link a video down below in the description box that explains it. But basically, it is an app that when food is going to be thrown out or maybe it's getting a little bit older, local supermarkets will put those items on a reduced price and you can buy them through this app. This entire box of peppers was $5. So we got Four, oh, we got five big peppers, and guess what? They're organic. Let's just even talk about that. That's awesome. And then tons. Look at all these little 
peppers, the little sweet ones, all this box for $5. So we're going to get to work and prep these. I know some of you have said that flash food is not in your area yet. Keep checking. Keep checking. You never know when they add a new supermarket or come to your area. Even visually, <laughs> these are so appealing and beautiful. Look at all this. The peppers froze beautifully. When you do them this way, they stay separate. And what's so great is we're going to food saver them now. And then you just take out what you need and then reseal the bag. So we are set with peppers for a while. Another tip before you leave the house to go food shopping check and see what you need and what you have. We went through our refrigerator. We looked at our freezer inventory. We checked the pantry inventory, the cabinets. We didn't need a heck of a lot. We focused on basically fresh food. So that worked out great for us. And those peppers, you saw we sliced them, we food savored them, they're in the freezer, and now we can just pull them out whenever we need them. And we did make stuffed peppers out of four of the large ones, so it was just a win. That Flash Food app, I will link the video down below if you are not familiar with it. But so many people are telling me it's popping up in their area. I know somebody in Canada just wrote and said Flash Food is in Canada. So it is just a great app to you. Now we're gonna talk about something that you shouldn't do, that I am guilty of. I am so disappointed in myself in a way, but in a way it's okay, because you can't be too hard on yourself. I needed dish cloths, dish towels, and I saw a great price on Amazon. There were six dish towels for $9. They had great ratings. They were this pretty teal blue like I love. It looked like a good deal for a good quality dish towel. When I got them in, I went to put the dish towels away, and I started to go through my dish towels and the real bad ones that had holes and just went to Paul for rags. I got to the bottom of my dish towel drawer. Guess what I found? One, two, three, four. Beautiful, beautiful dish towels that I thought at one point were too good to use and I put them away thinking I didn't want to ruin them or use them. I needed them now and I didn't even remember I had put them there. Not that $9 is a lot of money, it's, it's not. It's the principle that I didn't even practice what I encourage you all to do. Use the good dish towels, use the good tablecloth, use the fine china, that is what we have it for. You have to be okay though if something breaks or you have to be okay if something gets a stain on it. I am okay with that. I want these to be used and loved and to dry dishes and look beautiful hanging in my kitchen. And that's why I had originally bought them. So don't do what I did. Now we're going to get on to our zero food waste recipe. And I mean zero food waste when you see what we did. Every morning at breakfast, Paul says to me, what's for dinner? And I pull out my happy planner and I look and say, okay, tonight I have chicken down. And I said, but we have chicken wings, we have a whole chicken, and then we have one chicken breast. And he's like, pull out that chicken breast. We're going to make street tacos. And I'm like, what? What is, how do you even know what a street taco is? And he looks at me, he's like, oh, it's a buzzword. There's street corn, there's street tacos. And I was like, okay, Paul, we're going to make street tacos. Google is your friend. We looked up a recipe for street chicken taco, and I'll link that down in the description box. And we went to work and we used up bits and pieces in our refrigerator to make some of the most delicious mouth-watering street tacos that I've ever had. Not that I've ever had a street taco, but I can only assume that this was one of the best. So let's get back into the kitchen. So let me show you what we're going to marinate this chicken with first. So the original recipe I will link down below called for a pound and a half of chicken. Now we have nowhere near that, so I'm just going to eyeball our marinade ingredients. But let me tell you, sub out, I have a chicken breast. She said use chicken thighs. Use what you have. So the first thing I'm gonna do 
is add some lime juice because I just happen to have a, oh, sorry, I happen to have a half a lime in the refrigerator. She said about four tablespoons of orange juice. I didn't have orange juice, but guess what? I have a cutie in there. So we're going to use that. And don't think I'm wasting this. I will get every bit of juice out of both of these and freeze it. Then we're going to put a little pepper, freshly ground, a little chili powder, some paprika, some garlic powder. Oh, this is going to be good, right? Mm -hmm. Call for cinnamon. So I'm going to put cinnamon in. I'm not going to go crazy with it, but I am going to put a little. Just a sprinkling of salt and about a teaspoon of vinegar. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in here and I am just going to marinate this with my hands. Just rub all this goodness in. Once I let this marinate for an hour or two in the refrigerator, then we'll just grill it and this will be beyond delicious. Covered the chicken and we put it in the refrigerator to marinate for about an hour or two. Now there is still juice in this lime. So I am going to extract as much as I can, and then I think I'm even going to zest the peel. You don't want to waste anything. Food is so expensive. And to think people just take this and toss it, don't be that person. And now we also have some orange left. So that's good. A little pulp gets in there. No problem there. You don't want the white pith in there, so be careful, because that'll just make it bitter. And now I'm just going to pour it in my Mickey ice cube trays and that's okay that there's orange pulp in it believe me so now i have three little orange and lime marinade cubes for the next time i need to make a marinade so what i will do is just let these freeze then i'll pop them in a small freezer safe container and they'll be good to go I'm also going to zest this lime. I love this little zester that Paul got me. It works so well. Look at all the beautiful lime zests I got. Now someone may say, my goodness, Emmy, what a waste of time. I don't have time to do that. But you really do have time. It only took a few seconds and what a fresh enhancement for our tacos. It's almost time to put the chicken on the grill and I went through our refrigerator and I found all kinds of great stuff. 12 crunchy taco shells and they were in the pantry. So that's gonna be great. We found like a half of the tomato in there, but it's still good. We have three romaine hearts. We have a half a container of sour cream, three quarters of a jar of salsa. We have some pepper jack cheese in the fridge and we just pulled a little piece of cheddar out of the freezer. And then we're gonna use that wonderful zest on top of the chicken as well. So this is what I talk about when I say go through the, your refrigerator. There is a meal waiting there to be had with one chicken breast. So let's get to grilling that chicken. This chicken looks so good. He grilled it <laughs> both sides. Dixie is excited. The internal temperature, remember, has to be over 165 degrees. Oh my goodness. My absolute favorite part of that entire taco meal was the lime zest that I put and mixed in with the sour cream. It was mind-blowingly delicious. It was like poof, a flavor. Wow. Honestly, somebody else would have taken that lime and tossed it. Zero food waste. Life hack, don't waste food. So give this recipe a try. What was your favorite part of the taco? I thought that the uh, taco seasoning that you created was absolutely fantastic. Yes. The flavor of that taco with the lime juice in there and the zest and, and the seasoning on the chicken, it was fantastic. Hey, that's one chicken breast for two people. Yeah. And we were... And that was plenty. Oh my gosh. There mean, was like extra, right? Yeah. I, 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 it was just so good. You got to try it. It was a win. 
So we hope today's video was encouraging. Our question of the day is, what is a life hack that you use to save money? What is something that you apply daily, like looking and saying, I'm not gonna waste food, or looking and saying, I'm gonna look at this problem, and I'm going to try to come up with a solution that's not gonna cost me an arm and a leg. So share that with us down in the comments section below. It will not only encourage Paul and I, but it will teach us as well and all our viewers because that is how we learn from each other. Before we end this video, we wanna give a shout out. We were shopping the other day and this lovely young woman came up to us and she introduced herself and said that she watches Paul and I every Friday and we were just so happy to meet her. I can't tell you what it means to us when we are out and about and you all come up and say, we watch you on TV. You know us, but we don't know you. So this is just such a real way that we connect with you. So if you see us out and about, come on up and say hello. And Hannah, hey, we hey, just <laughs> we want to thank you for coming up to us and making our day because you really did. Thank you. So we ask that you please give this a big thumbs up. You have no idea how much it helps us in the world of YouTube to get our videos out there. We ask that you hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Now I have been getting a lot of comments saying that YouTube has been unsubscribing people without them even knowing it. So make sure you check your subscription button and that you hit that notification to all, so every time we make a video, you will be alerted. We ask you to be safe, we ask you to be well, and above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, may God greatly bless you.